Yeah, the title of the talk is like modern AppSec versus the Genia application threats. Uh, just before start, I just want to like what's the scope and what's the inspiration on this talk. The Genia application here, what I mean is like the applications that are built on top of LLMs or like the use cases like the code Gen AI, basically traditional apps built with the Gen AI assist. So just to like understand like how many of you here like are working like building maybe a Gen AI apps or like securing them. Good. Uh, about like uh, similarly like how many of you are like assisting maybe the code Gen AI securing the codes built like traditional apps. Only few. Okay. Uh, I've been like fortunate to like work on both the cases, uh, like uh, just to get back like like what's the inspiration behind this talk, right? Like uh, we have seen like a Gen AI like explosion, the application explosion in the last year and a half. But like if you look back, like the Gen AI is not uh, something that's new, right? It's been there from like almost 2017-ish with like the Transformers paper, like there was like attention is all you need. That's what kind of started it. But uh, like the explosion of it like started I think around uh, November 2022 when the chat GPT 3.5 started with like invitation only and like uh, that's kind of like started like everybody wanted to like after once it's like maybe people came back from holidays in 2022 uh, year end holidays and as more and more people got like access to this uh, like uh, like everybody wanted to like move there, maybe like the dumb documentations or like all the support to a chatbot basically, right? Everybody wanted to like, every business wanted to move smart. Like they thought like, oh, this is kind of human interaction. So everybody wanted to adopt that. And, but there were some concerns or the, with the data and that was like still blocked because of like, there are not much adoptions like because of data concerns and like, uh, but like with few months, Later, like there were like open source LLM scheme where you can install this in on-prem and the data would be like within your boundary side. Right? So that like expanded it much further. With that, I think I'm sure like many of you also are part of like got like business needs to secure these apps, basically request to like secure these apps, right? But uh, that's kind of like there were like a lot of FUD around that, basically like fear, like uncertainty and doubt, right? From the security, how to secure these things. These are new things. There are like a lot of concerns, like hallucinations, like prompt injections or like data risk, all those things, right? Uh, that's That's been like very common trend, right? If you see any other previous technology shift like cloud or maybe even the microservices few years ago, like there were similar concerns about like security, right? There, I'm very co confident that was the same case with the internet era or like similar adoption, but I was not part of that, but like I'm very confident these were the same cases there was fun around it. But one thing a little different in this case, I would say maybe fortunate, like the security community, like maybe OWASP or like CSA or like the even the security researchers or like education, like like the research around this was like to like build the mitigations or like the like get like prevention techniques around these like security risks is like on par or like maybe one step behind the technology evolution. So we are seeing like like really good like. Uh, like availability of like resources to like how to like secure these things, right? So uh, when I take that resources and like compare it with like modern apps, like there is like really a good overlap of it, right? Like uh, if if uh, the it is not like uh, I was like yeah it's with the FUD like we were like some of us I think like we may need to go back to school to learn these things to secure these things, right? But if you look take a look at these things like yeah they are like if we, if we have like already been securing many of these things similar stuff like for years now, so we, that's what I'm gonna like uh, delve into in the next like coming slides. So that's all this talk about basically like if you are like securing the Gen AI apps or like even if you are like securing code, like code generated with generative AI. So like how does it fare against like if you have modern apps like how much maybe like how much are the risks already being maybe mitigated or with little tweaks we can mitigate them or some of them we need to still focus on like very new perspectives on that. Yeah, just some logistics. Uh, I think uh, this is like some of the things are my opinion. So like always like uh, like I would be like in the end I'll like make sure like there are only 17 slides so I should have like maybe five ten minutes definitely for other opinions, comments and like questions. So based on this like I'm gonna keep it in the end. And these are like, the, the opinions are my own, nothing to do with my work or anything. 
I did make available the slides on the thing. If you trust to scan this QR code, you can go ahead and scan it and like access the slides uh, parallelly. Uh, I, I'm sure like most of you can read. I don't think you need to go there, but I'm still like making that available. I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, before I start a little bit about me, I've been uh, in the cyber security space for like last 15 years in two different enterprises. Uh, I'm currently working at Coe City as a staff security engineer. I was the first security hire, so like I've been a generalist, like working in various domains of the sec security. And before that, I worked almost for 10 years uh, in Juniper Networks, like building the network and security gears securely. And also like in both of the, these cases, I was like kind of a very early uh, engineer in the AppSec. So I was like part to like bootstrap them and like move them to maturity. I did add like my LinkedIn connection there, like feel free to connect and mention that you are part of like uh, listening on the recording or like you're part of the talk today. Just going ahead, let's see, I think I spent five minutes. So in the next 40 minutes, what are you gonna like look, uh, talk about? First, we gonna take a look at like, uh, how does a modern app sec look like? Then like we gonna look at like a high level generative AI architecture. Uh, next is like, uh, I'm gonna look like, this is majorly the OASP LLM top 10 from the version 1.1 and like, uh, I'm sure like there is a 2.0 survey going on, like there are a lot of, uh, like uh, like everybody should like, like based on your in inputs should like participate in that survey. Then I'm gonna compare like, uh, how does the modern app say can these threats fare against each other? Then I'm gonna spend some time on the, securing the code generated from the generative AI. Then I'm gonna pause for like questions, opinions, and comments. What is an AppSec, right? It's usually like uh, complements the S standard SDLC. In standard SDLC, we see like, uh, there is like a plan and design where there is requirements, and there is like, next phase is like these requirements are like built, and like tested, and before the next goes to deployment phase, right? So that's kind of a standard SDLC. And like, how does this, like our modern AppSec like complements this, right? Like, so we have like two broader like uh, practices in the AppSec, maybe like AppSec, like uh, AppSec policy and the uh, application security training. So the AppSec policy covers like what all the, the AppSec covers and who's responsible and like some of these practices that apply and all those like, how does, how does this run? And like all those things are covered in the policy usually in a modern AppSec. And like security trainings cover like all the people who touch some kind of app application somewhere maybe in the design, like product managers or like engineers who build and test or like even the like SREs who like deploy and manage those things. So that's, these are like very broad uh, practices. So, uh, okay. So these are like, uh, there are like other practices that are like part of like application security program, right? There are requirements, like the requirements, the security requirements complements the requirements that are built by the, for the products or applications. Then there are like threat models. Sometimes the threat model may be done in like later stages, but sometimes it's done in like early stages as well to like see the threats against the requirements or the MEP of the product. And there is like compliance, right? Compliance is, uh, it may be a separate function somewhere, but sometimes it's part of AppSec as well. Uh, like then if you're coming like little to the right, there is ASPM. That's like usually that's one of the modern uh, thing that like helps to like, uh, prioritize many of these practices or findings from these many of these practices that right? it kind of covers like build test to the deployment stage. And in the bottom, like there are security champions program, like many of the modern apps that runs that like interface with the various, the build development and the requirements, various stages teams. Uh, in the build and test and like stages, like there are specific testings like the SAS, DAST or IAST or like SCA scans or IAC. Some of these are automated scans basically with the toolings. And there are some of the manual things like crypto review and like um, some of the manual test or like sometimes the pen testing. And like these are some of the manual practices basically like um, cover like helping in the AppSec. So if uh, some of the on the right, some of these may be not like traditional AppSec may not consider them as AppSec practices. So these may be like maybe common like uh, in the, they may call as cloud security or infrastructure security, but to keep it like holistic, I'm like keeping them as one, one umbrella, under one umbrella. So in that, like maybe like some of the infrastructure, like the CSPMs or like security operations may know like threat intel and all the other things or like chain management and like sometimes runs runtime security. So like kind of monitoring the logs and all those things will fall under that. So this is kind of like I'm taking an example of like uh, modern AppSec and I'm going to take that comparative like 
like the mitigations are required for like the some of like generic AI like top security threats. Let's take a look at like a high level architecture of a Gen AI. So underlying like it's again like it's a common software, right? It's not like uh, something like it turns on maybe human brain or something. It's still gonna run on like a compute storage and network. It's basically a modern engineering software with like heavily emphasis on the statistics or the maths. So it definitely needs a lot more GPUs. That's one gonna be one major change. But otherwise it's common infrastructure that like most of the modern like uh, software run on. Uh, just don't go with the brain. It's just like I'm also going with the trend. It's nothing brain. It's just the software again. So like the next layer of like generative AI would be like a foundational model or like LLMs. I would call them. Uh, these are basically like the transformer models that like uh, built from various companies are uh, using like various like training data that may be internet or like maybe GitHub repos based on the LLM what they serve or sometimes the books or various like even some of them are like nowadays like are using even like uh, not a regular like they are like even the generative AI generating the data to like train the other things. So uh, one more thing is like these are like can be closed source or maybe open source based on the deployment or security things that may be like uh, there are two various models are available. I'm not going to consider these in the application. The one layer above would be the applications that I'm going to consider on this talk. So the on top of this is like the using the LLMs there can be various apps built right like the first generation would be like a very like when the like LLM came out in at least like the chat the building a Ch chat bots or like the prompt based on a from take a prompt from a user and pass it on to the LLM and get back the response. Those were like very early early apps and they were little adopted to like kind of like using other various frameworks. They were like kind of made to like uh, chained chain prompts right where like one from like multiple prompts were used to get a output required. Uh, but there were like even one more addition to that was like adding memory to the these apps like so that was another um, like kind of a uh, flavor of that the top one the next was like the like a uh, rag or like uh, the retrieval augmented generation was there was a next level lay, like uh, level up app so this basically what happens is like in the rag you add additional um, uh, like another confidential data uh, and uh, like which would be like kind of like in the form of vectors like again this will be like encoded in the same way the LLM will consume. So those would be stored in the vector DB. I have not pictured it. I'm just keeping that vector DB in like kind of applications. But there would be additional vector DBs used to like store these vectors. And uh, those would be like even that has another advantage is like kind of explainability part of it that comes with the rag. So where is the the data coming like whenever there is output you can always add explainability if it is a rag application. So those were the next generation. I think I missed one part of it is like fine tuned LLM apps, right? Like the first generation of apps again, like the taking the LLM, like some of the apps can be built, like you can add your confidential data and fine tune the LLM on top of existing training by the vendors. So that was like another generation of apps. So the next is like, I think this is the, I think what we are seeing is the next generation, like agents or plugins or like function calling. So that's the next generation of apps that are like currently being built. So we, we are still seeing all the three type of majorly like uh, or the, with flavors of them like still being developed and like kindly like uh, deployed. So this is like what I'm going to use it to like kind of uh, consider these are the applications that we will be kind of securing and the LLM top 10 like really well covers like uh, even the 1.1 covers really well and even the 2.0 what's coming like has really good coverage on like what are the actual risks or the security threats and how to mitigate them. So I'm going to take the 1.1 uh, to and like kind of map them and see like uh, how does it like if you have a modern app sec like do you need to like do something different or like are they are we like some of the practices already with a little tweak we can like mitigate those risks. I'm going to take a little water break. I'm going to use the same uh, picture we used. Uh, I'm not going to map them where these risks actually are, but I, I'm sure like uh, I'm, uh, there is a LLM top 10 has really mapped these threats of each flows. I, I would encourage everybody to go and look there like each of these threats uh, like are mapped exactly where in the flow data flow these fall under. 
but I'm not going to go into that depth. I think there is a talk at 2 p.m. today that I think is going to cover those things. I'm not sure which room that is in, but there is in the schedule. I would encourage everybody to like or interested to like follow there. Uh, the I think I'm just going to first the prompt injection, right? This is the top one in the WAPS LLM top 10. And that this has been one of the most like talked about because this has been like has been demonstrated in multiple things are like I'm not sure they were like exploited in the wild, but there have been multiple demonstrations of this. And even in well known like well known uh, LLMs, these have been demonstrated against. The prompt, I'm sure like uh, the injection attacks who have been in from forever, right? I think anybody want to guess like when was the first injection maybe like seen? Uh, like say let's take SQL injection, right? Anybody want to take a guess when was the first SQL injection seen? Uh, 2000? I think it was 1996. I think it first was sending in 1996. I think with the 2000 it kind of exploded. So, yeah, I think injections been there like forever, basically, in various flavors. We've been securing it, right? Like the standard practices like input validation, privilege separation, and like all these things been like we have been doing it. Like even in the prompt injection, like basically where we take a prompt, uh, it can be like a direct uh, direct in injection where the user input has malicious code or like maybe some other way they can influence the prompt uh, indirect like prompt injections. But both kind of have the similar mitigations that we follow for like our standard, like other injections as well, right? Like the input validation is one thing, the privilege separations. But some of these are like how uh, like special cases where like if you take the multimodal models, right? So they don't fall, like they're still evolving basically. So I would not fully call that modern AppSec mitigates this. Or like if you follow like uh, uh, standard injections, right? Like where you do during the test. You take like like take an XSS kind of like various payloads. You test against it, or in the runtime you do input validation and map that. Right? There are similar prompt injections systems or frameworks available, where you can like uh, and there are payloads that you can use against like during the test phase to make sure your apps are does not have it. And even in the runtime you can monitor them. Like maybe there are LLMs available that take the prompt and give you like uh, kind of give you like uh, is it like prompt possible to inject all those that are available. So there are similar frameworks that you use for other injections are available, but there is, it's still evolving. I would not still like call it fully like if you have modern AppSec with a little tweak, you could not mitigate. There are still like, you may need to like follow, keep following these or at all advancing. So I'm gonna, as I go around, I'm gonna use the color coding. Uh, the lighter green means like, this is kind of handled with the current AppSec, but still needs some kind of additional looked into. Uh, if it's a darker green means like kind of a very like I'm quite confident like the modern apps that handles it. I'm I'm really sorry like if there are like if there are anybody who can't see the color, but I, I'm gonna call them out as well. I, I, I after coding I realized that like I did a mistake around that using the color for like uh, separating. Uh, the next of the threat in the LLM second is like uh, insecure in output handling. Uh, this is basically taking an LLM output and like passing it back to like maybe a user or another down downtime system where the payload would be similar to what you have seen, like maybe the XSS or like CSRF. And we've been like securing the apps again this forever almost, right? Like uh, we have like well-known tooling where we take like uh, mal malicious user input and like like securing against these things. Here like the 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 tweak would be like take like trust the LLM as malicious and like make sure that you don't use that as is basically. So, uh, but these are like kind of the payloads and all, all the things like we've been doing it, like being, if you take a modern app like we've been doing it like forever basically. The next would be like the, the third in the OASP list is like training or the rag, like the rag is not there, but I'm added it because it has a similar characters. Uh, the training data poisoning, right? Like there are various ways like this data can be influenced. And uh, currently these, I don't, uh, most of the apps like, or like other than maybe like who are building the apps specifically machine learning, they may be like handling this. But if you are building a generic apps, we never been handling the training data. So if you, when, if you're building something that like you are maybe like uh, you are adding like fine tuning the LLM with your own data or like you're building a rag, you need to make sure like you secure your like training data basically. So this would be like one of the example where you need to like pay additional attention. The next in the 
uh, LLM top 10 is like the denial the model denial of service. Uh, this is similarly like DOS uh, in like what we see in like other applications, right? Like maybe API can exhaust the resources or like uh, like some of the special cases where we gonna like run out of resources, right? So uh, if you look at the like prevention here, like making sure like you monitor the resource consumption continuously or like making sure like there are limitations on the API calls. So these are kind of in similar to like what we've been doing for the other applications. So, but this being like some of the cases where we need to make sure the LLM specific areas are handled. So that needs some additional handling, but like additional, some of the existing practices also apply here. Okay, this next one is like the supply chain vulnerabilities. I think I'm very sure like in the last five years, everybody's working on this, we're working the AppSec. So this is this we know of like with the solar winds or like even the least at XC or even like yesterday's, I think the the polyfill. So we've been like handling this forever basically in the last five years. So, but this same applies to the LLM apps as well because like there are so many third party components here, right? If you see the model coming from third party, the training data used by the models or like if you are using the fine tune that are coming from third party. And even if you have like additional frameworks that you use to secure it, or like if you, for inference, these are again third party frameworks. So they like, there are continuously like RC, RCEs are coming up in like if you are using Langchain or all these things, right? So there are like continuously there are like issues coming up in these third party components. So supply chain is one of the critical phase. Um, and this, this has similar mitigations where you monitor this third party or like signing or like making sure the integrity of the components. But some of the additional things here are like the, the LLM specific uh, like training data security and all those things like supply chain are like needs additional like uh, handling basically. So I'm going to keep that like still call that like it still needs some special handling. The next, the next is like sensitive information disclosure. So like if uh, based on like if you have like a sensitive data in your training data or like another uh, confident like maybe fine tuning or rag there's a high chance that that data may leak out from the output of the LLMs or the applications, right? So, so there is always, uh, we've been doing it like small scales before for various applications. Like we do like, like kind of scrubbing of the PII data. So that's been done before, but the scale of it, what we like for the LLMs is multitude of like maybe 100x or 1000x or much more than that because these are like very large things. So there are like, the, we need to scale out these practices that we've been handling the PII or like scrubbing all those things. So there is definitely like additional handling needs to be done here. But the same practices that we've been following for PII and other handling, data handling, sensitive information that applies here. The next is the, in the LLM top 10 is the insecure plugin, uh, insecure plugin design. I'm even extending it to include the agents in this. Basically agents are usually the third party how plugins are kind of like part of like the first first party and there are like also function calling capabilities so this kind of like um, fall, in, fall under that it's basically like insecurely designed agents or plugins based what does mean is like they have like not handled the privileges right or like they are not securely built but this kind of fall into like we've been like if you follow like secure designs threat model or the red teaming uh, these are, these have the similar like mitigations as we build other software, right? So like the, if you follow the same practices, these should like, like we should be able to design this securely. Basically this handles the output that comes from the LLMs and do the additional things. But if you build like what these agents can do, like if you do the privilege separations, you add the right auth and like, uh, additional like same way the other softwares are built, uh, these can like be like secure. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm quite confident these are like, existing practices should be able to handle it. Uh, the excessive agents here is like additional capabilities that are added to the agents that are not required. This is kind of similar to the previous one, um, but one one additional, the separation would be to like kind of autonomy given to some of these agents that are like, was not part of the previous applications we built, right? Like autonomy was not kind of, uh, part of the previous like the LLMs can kind of like of maybe like uh, doing some of the critical operations so that was not part of it. So those some of the uh, we need to be cautious like if we giving autonomy to these agents uh, some of the critical operations may need kind of human uh, 
monitoring. So that's one thing that's been additionally needed. But otherwise, like some of the like functionality, like if you build an app, we always make sure like if you build a making sure like additional functionality is always removed that is not required in the productions, all these some of these things we've been following. But some of the like handling the autonomy is the one thing that would need additional like uh, handling here. The next is the LLM top is over reliance or lack of oversight. This is kind of, uh, this is a hallucination. Uh, basically, like uh, the LLMs kind of predicting or confidently some of the things that maybe have a reputational risk or like some kind of even kind of cause um, like some of the bad behaviors downstream. So this is a very new um, uh, because like we, uh, the hallucinations come up with LLM basically. They were not part of the previous uh, software stack. Uh, some of the mitigations here are like you need to tune the LLMs right or like choose the right LLMs and all those additional me measures needed are like kind of needs additional handling. The next in the top 10 is the model theft. Uh, this is kind of similar to like IT theft risks previously being part of like various organization. Um, uh, but once some of the changes would be here right like using the prompt, people are able to like extract the data. So that would be something different from existing IP protection basically. So that's kind of like I, how I consider like the threats map against the modern app sec. The darker greens are kind of like handled most by the current existing app sec. The lighter greens would be like, uh, like needs a definitely additional attention. The, the yellow ones are like the entirely new kind of thing specific to LMs. I'm sure like there are questions, but I'm going to pause in the end for these. Okay. How many of you think like this is like, this is the current state, like the bot building the code? Like, are we there? How many of you think like we are there? Definitely not right. Like, uh, the, like, yeah, there are like the company selling like, oh, our, the, the bot can build the code like as good as human, but no, there is like, <laughs> okay, let's talk about like, uh, the quality part of it is entirely different. Like there are various things, but I'm, um, let's talk about the security part of it, right? And, uh, give me a minute. I think we're good on the time. Yeah, this is from the GitHub Copilot documentation where they mention, right, treat your, like, the Copilot generated code as a third party code, basically, and they want you to, like, treat it as third party and make sure, like, all the security testing are taken care, but like, uh, I think I refer, uh, added some of the, the research papers from the Dan Bonnet, like Stanford, where like, or like there was one more um, research done by, I forgot the name, uh, mentioning like people are not following the practices, basically testing, like blindly believing this code and using it into production. Like people usually follow that even for their own code, right? Like they take it like 40 to 50 percent, like people like just take the code without testing mode to deployment. With the generic code that has the percentage as actually little bit increased, people are more blindly building code and moving like even the 60 percent are like seen as moving them like to production without much testing. So some of these like, uh, I'm going to talk. Okay, let's see like some of the threats, top threats, like what are like various uh, studies and all found for the generic code. First is like insecure code. Uh, the code, uh, the, uh, a little bit uh, like the GenAI again is like, is based on statistical model, right? Like it's basically statistics. So like if there is a code from the training that has like maybe like five years or like more, more examples of the code vulnerable or like some of the injection may be recent ones, but the mitigation was like older code may not have the fixes for that, right? But they were like, the training data LLM used maybe like has the more examples of those that kind of generate some of these outdated code or insecure code, right? I'm gonna, the good example like seen is like multiple times the newer payloads or like newer like accesses and all those payloads were not handled by the code generated by the code gen AI that have been I think even shown in the, the paper I referenced from the Stanford study. Um, the next is, uh, I think this is very easily can be like, uh, second one, if you go and ask any LLMs, right? Like, write me a, give me a code with like a requirements to a text, maybe good for example of Python, it's always references like a year or year and a half old version of the library, which may have like a CVs, usually like at least few CVs I have seen. So that again, the various chart, like the code gen AI, there is again, the LLM have different flavors, right? Some of these at least have, what I have checked like, they are like six months old library or some of them go back like two, three year old libraries basically. 
So that's one other uh, like uh, common thread. Um, then other uh, issues like code licensing issues, like these are multiple people I've seen like the code gen AI, like writing the code that is like generating the code that has like licensing issues that would be kind of not a security thread, but like this, many companies consider licensing under security. So I'm going to consider it here. Oopsie. What happened here? Okay. Okay. The next one is the supply chain risk. Um, with the, the code generated from the, the bot, chat bot, like the GPT bots, how like, uh, like it makes easier, like if an attacker can influence the training data, like say type of squatting attacks, right? So they become much easier for somebody to like push the or, or various flavors of like the type, like the libraries, maybe like human error would not notice that easily. Uh, or like there are other issues as well. Like I mentioned, like outdated code is a supply chain risk here. So continuing on that, like the jailbreaking, right? Like the jailbreaking here would be like from the chat GPT, like building a malware, like would have been much harder before, but with the the code gen, like the bots, the it's like the one of the things like is if you ask for a malware, many of these like are there are no protections against like it's easy to build a malware against like maybe your own public like own infrastructure also like maybe vulnerable because of that, and like many of these again the statistics like right, the weak crypto or the security protocols if you ask uh, like a GPT to write some of the connections I've seen multiple times it's it falls back to FTP many times. Or like not a modern crypto, like like it chooses CBC or GCM for AES, or all those things like or like TLS 1.0 also was sometimes uh, used. So these are like some of the basically the way it is like some LLM site not does not handle the uh, the right. So this based on the we have seen this behavior. The next level is like yeah these are like possibilities based on the training data. Like the malware can be easily uh, obscured in the code. Uh, these are like Something like, uh, let's take a, like, exit kind of attack, right? How, how does that can fit into, right? Like, say, uh, uh, obscure code through, like, uh, compromising uh, training data. And here it comes, like, uh, kind of, like, make, like, bypassing that through security tooling, right? So, we, again, these two, like, there are security tooling. There are various, I'm going to come to that, but this is possible, like, it makes it easier if you don't have, like, right protections. Is some delivering some kind of like exit style like payloads would become much 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 more easier now. Um, like another would be like misconfigs because of like hard coded creds are very common. Like if there are like or like other misconfigs basically like because of the, the again the training data or like various things that are being again seen here. The next is like evade security link. If if a like malicious actor wanna like uh, like evade security tooling. Like a good example would be like say the SAST, right? Like if you, if for the SAST, most of them provide like like comment block where that does the code does not go through SAST, right? It's easier for like uh, Gen AI to like see like based on the infrastructure that's been used, kind of like import them, right? Because the, there is a good chance like the developer gonna miss it and the tooling gonna miss it if you just rely on like um, automated tooling here because like. The code may add like the comments block, which like say if you're using some of the SAS that are relevant, the tooling like blocks can be added to like not to make sure that code goes through the security tooling. Some of these are like possibilities. Some of these are like being seen right now in the like usage of these. Let's see like what all the some of the mitigations against these and like do we have them right now? One is like the code gen AI governance. This is like uh, usage of like making sure like the right usage of this. This is little way above even the security and like this should cover like what all the projects are under like can use the code gen AI based on like criticality of it. Like are those like the existing code can be kind of used to training. All those things should be like covered. Otherwise there is a high chance like your IP may leak or all those things can happen. So, so this is currently not being done. I'm going to follow the same color coding. Uh, this, this is something kind of new. The next, the securing the code gen I would be like making sure like the code reviews are foolproof. The previously like if you see like there was a developer, there was a peer, like at least there was some kind of human, like first level human who was writing the code and ownership, right? But in gen, like uh, gen AI code, like there is chance that there may not be any human at all looking at it, right? So making sure that there is a foolproof code review. Like we've been like standard modern apps, like, like usually the like code reviews are mandatory, 
but we need to make sure like this is followed. So I'm just going to still like as the code reviews are there, I'm going to keep it like part of the modern apps that covers it. The next would be modern SCA. I'm, why I mentioned the modern SCA, like some of the SCAs by nature, like just going to take your version they give and the the library, right? It's just going to give you like what all the CVs again this, right? But it's not going to look, is there a type of squat or like, is this like, where is it obtained from? Is it like doing something runtime? Like it's like doing some different behavior. So the modern SCA really plays like a crucial role to secure against the code to the generated from the Gen AI. So like that's the, but still like if you have it like modern apps, like I'm assuming like we'll have a modern SCA. The next should be like if the code does not, like if a developer does not understand the code uh, developed by the Gen AI, they should reject it. I think this is standard policy, right? Like we don't want to see any obscure code. So like, still but we need to make sure that like if you are using the gen ai that has been followed and also like train people to like understand this like i'm going to cover the training next but still we need to make sure the people understand the what they need to do uh, and like next would be like the monitor and use of code genius right these some of these the threats here are like jailbreaking we don't want people to like use the jailbreaking uh, and some of the like we don't want to use them against like violations of the governance right against like are they using some of the against the like projects that they don't want should not be using the Gen AI against or the reviews and all those things so this is kind of a new because like we never had the Gen AI thing so if you are using, incorporating Gen AI so make sure like these are done the next would be like with the AI assisted coding right we are seeing almost like 30 percent faster code generated so 30 to 40 percent of the faster code uh, security teams are not getting people at least 40% budget approved. So we need to have some kind of security assisted testing as well. So like that would be like kind of uh, like additional hands to like secure these things. Uh, the next is the developer training on the secure code gen AI use. So like the, we need to make sure like they are trained how to use it securely and like identify some of the risks that they should be aware of. This is again a new thing. Uh, there may be previous secure coding trainings, but that, that definitely needs update for the, the developer, like how to handle the code. The next is the secure the model and training data. Like uh, if you are using uh, any on-prem, you need to make sure that models are secure. And if you are using any in-house code to train these things, make sure that they are secure. They don't want have people to influence them such that like uh, they can be used to deliver the payloads or obscure code or any kind of malware through them. That's again a new thing like we never been done before. The next one would be like uh, thorough testing of the code generated. Like there are of this like many cases like the testing is not done or like the testing is done by the AI, right? So, but make sure that like there are some kind of human intervention basically like the lot of cases you need testing or the testing is based on the code generated from the Gen AI. Then there is a separate or the same tool is used to like build the test code as well. So that we need to be careful that when they're used, like there is some kind of supervision. So, but that is being like part of the security testing and all the other things. So we need to be like follow the existing methods, like additional, like human, the testing continues basically. I think that's all I had for the talk today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'll take some questions and if you have anybody has opinions. Okay, so uh, does anybody have any questions? Okay, so um, I have a, f a few questions Check myself. Um, first of all, uh, great talk, very Thank refreshing. You. Uh, especially because I would, you mentioned OWASP uh, LLM top 10, and uh, I myself uh, was present, for for example, on the Lisbon chapter presentation oh, nice. when they announced the LLM top 10. So it's very refreshing to see somebody uh, talk about applying existing AppSec uh, processes to generative AI applications. Uh, so the first question I want to ask you is um, specifically, 
Uh, have you, do you have any uh, examples of like real breaches of ex or exploitations of uh, generative AI applications? Uh, and it can be uh, based on, for example, the top 10 vulnerabilities or others that you have identified. Sure, I think, uh, good question. You know. Uh, I think the, the first one is the prompt injections, right? That's been like demonstrated like some kind of like even the get insights into the LLMs as well as the system prompts. So that there are like quite a few of them like uh, been at least very specific to prompt injections. So like even the good example is like uh, not good example, like, uh, to add that like NCSC like just listed like uh, I think few months ago. They, they are calling like prompt injections as the next SQL injection kind of thing. So that is one thing like have been not may not have actual bridge but definitely it has been used to like uh, like get into some of the additional things basically or like assist in other bridge, other other additional security measures break into the security measures that the llms came up with uh, the, uh, but there are some interesting other things like the training data or like kind of uh, that have been the i think one there was one case where like people were like i think one i'm not sure where was it they were able to like influence the training data like to like get the hotels they were like uh, influencing the reviews uh, they were able to like and the llm used to depend on these reviews to like allow employees to book like nicer hotels they were like kind of use this to like influence the reviews and get into really nice like hotels so that like they bring down the the reviews for some of the hotels they don't people wanted don't want to go during the travel from the employee travel so there was one interesting uh, attack around that like it was discovered and i think they fixed it but there was like one of the llm based uh, the the booking app was like like breach kind of thing there there, there are like there are some of the breaches have been seen around that but okay. it's still like kind of early adoption so like the breaches are like coming as as like very like as we go basically okay thank you um another question i have is also a bit touching on this but it's also on uh, the fact that it kind of surprises me, for example, on the LLM top 10, that, uh, you know, prompt injections, of course, is going to be high, but I find it surprising that, for example, uh, over-reliance on, on generated code or lack of oversight uh, wasn't higher, uh, especially for, like, uh, code generation AI models. And I wanted to ask you, for example, uh, how secure you think code generated by code generation AI models is. Uh, yeah, the security of the code gen AI, like I think the first, the Da Vinci work came out or some other similar models, right? Like the, from the early, what they came out, they had really insecure code. Like I think the two years ago when they came out, the first versions of them had really insecure code. I think as they're evolving, the newer generations, even the Lama code or like all these things that they definitely are have improved, like even the insecure, like the libraries. When the first generation came, they were like going almost two years back. But if you go the similar things in the newer versions that came in the last few months, they are definitely like having a secure code actually. But what happens is like the many of the commercial offerings, they are not like relying on these, right? And also people are not, people take these offline models and install in their environment and like they make available to the developers. They are not constantly updating these things because as any cycle that updating or like the things take a lot of time on people resources people are not constantly updating these things so that's what happening is like people are struck with older models so they are kind of still using this to like generate insecure code actually thank you uh, do you have a question yeah I'm, I'm really curious it seems like a lot of themes these days are explainability about these models and when we come up with answers i'm curious are there efforts to, we talked about the, the code review in kind of expanding the, the, the use of, of explainability or looking at even as developers having AI analysis of, of PRs or things like that. Like, are there any big movements in bringing more explainability or, or that kind of concept uh, to, to that process? At least not in the space of like code generation. I haven't seen much uh, the movement around that, but for ge the other generic use cases where like people are building enterprise applications, the explainability part is like taking really good like uh, coverage. Like people are like asking for it, and there are like really good like the rag is one thing, right? Like where people are like pushing for it because so that like you can go back and reference where is this the explanation. A good example should be like many cases like uh, one of the use cases like seeing is the lawyer firms are using the Gen AI now, right? So they can't rely on like, oh, where does this recommendation came from? So they are like kind of using the rag or like making sure that uh, there is always the explainability where the 
this answer or output from the LLM came from, but not in the code gen at, like at least that's not happening yet. But the generic use case definitely enterprise softwares and all like these are definitely, there is a moment to get there basically, yes. Any other questions? Does anybody else have any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You were, you were talking about monitoring uh, the usage of code gen AI. What would be your recommendations around implementing that? Yeah, I think it's still there are no tooling available kind of thing to monitor it. It kind of like maybe like very uh, patterns what people are using and like uh, you may be like custom like may need to like some, something detections like custom detection scripts to make sure what the query people are pushed into LLMs. And that may be like way to like start, get started with as we evolve, maybe like there may be tooling available that we can incorporate into the standard tooling basically. But at the moment, like there are not much happening, but we need to be cautious how they usually the major concern there is like people using it to jailbreak or like using things like that they're not supposed to use. Basically, that would be the thing like just a good regular monitoring uh, on occasionally would be a good start for that. Okay, I think we have uh, time for a couple more questions. Uh, does anybody else have? Okay, that's that's fine too. Uh, thank you, Alexandra. And um, uh, I think that's about it for now. Thank uh, you. Thanks, Nuno, for supporting this. Thank you. Uh, thank you all also for coming. This is about it uh, right now for this period on the defense track. We will be having uh, more talks incoming from uh, one fifteen forward. So if you are interested in any of the other talks on the defense track, uh, just pop by by then. Uh, and thank you all for coming.